Music and sound effects in Godot. Let's go. Most games have music and sound effects. They are instrumental to making your game feel good. If you take a game without sound effects and add sound effects, and then you add a little background track, you're going from uh, pretty boring to a lot better. And uh, Godot makes it real easy. So I've got a blank game, a main scene, Node 2D. We'll just do it in 2D. Talk a little bit about positional audio. But for right now, we'll go ahead and just focus on simplistic sound effect playing and music playing. I want to start from nothing. So here's a great website, sfxr.me, sfxr.me. It's a website called JSF, JS Fixer. <laughs> How do you even say that? Um, but it lets you generate sound effects. It remind, It's based on an old uh, tool called SFXer um, from, from 2007. This tool ruled. It was made with uh, Flash, I want to say, but uh, this person made it in JavaScript, and uh, that way it's a lot more accessible. Um, and you can click what you want to make, so like, that's a jump sound, power up, explosion, pick up coin. You can keep clicking it, and you get different ones. You can even modify the different settings yourself. You can even mutate it, which takes it and changes it just slightly. I like that one. All you do then is you click this permalink, and you can say, save link as, and I'm gonna go find my game, which is in game dev screencast sound demo. I'm gonna, actually, no, sorry. You just click this wave file, <laughs> open it in downloads. So you've got your file on your computer. Take that and drag it in, and you've got this music file. It's read-only. You can hear that play. You can see some details about it. Now, to play that sound effect in a game, you create a sound, sound, audio, stream player. And you'll see some other ones, like audio stream player 2D, that you can like put something in your game world that plays a sound effect, and then the closer you are, the louder it is. That's super cool, um, but beyond what we're doing here. And we'll just call this pickup SFX. And then over here in your stream, you've got all these options. I almost always just do quick load, and it shows all your audio files. Click open, and now you'll see you can play that, and you've got it. And um, you've got this audio stream player node, and it has a finished signal, which is cool. Um, you can say autoplay or is it playing, um, all that stuff. But let's just add a button that plays our sound effect. We'll say call it play sound effect. We'll say play SFX. We'll just drag it to the middle. And we'll say on button pressed. Well, we need a script. Put that in main. Clear out this stuff. We don't need it. Okay, here we go. Click. The signal when the button's pressed will play our sound effect. And all you have to do then is do pickup sound effect dot play. Run our game. You hear that? There you go. Pretty nice, right? Really, uh, really dig that. So that's all you have to do with the sound effect. And um, some cases, some some examples of this would be like. Maybe you have a spaceship that has a weapon. In your spaceship script, you can, or in your spaceship node, like you might have a scene for your spaceship, for your player spaceship. You can then just create your audio stream player, associate the stream file, and then every time it's fired, you just press, you just call the play function. And uh, that's, you know, the basics of sound effects. It's pretty intuitive and simplistic. And music is not too different. So I've got this song I made called Circus. Got some platformer vibes. I've got an AUG file because it's a little smaller than a wave. Godot plays AUG files. I'll just drag that into my project. Now we have Circus AUG. And let's see. We can double click it and play it again. That's great. And here's something different from the sound effect, which is I want this to loop. So all you do is you double click it, check the loop, click re-import, 
And now when that finishes playing, it will play again. So let's drag it to the end. Ooh, it started again. Because you usually want your background music to loop. So um, that's that. We'll go ahead and we'll duplicate that button. I pressed Command D. You could do Control D if you're on Windows or Linux. Um, and we're going to call this playing music. And we'll just move this over here. And who cares if it doesn't look good? Um, we'll do the same thing. Connect the button. It has our old signal connection. We're going to connect it here. I just want to make sure that that's not connected, double connected. It is. So when you duplicate something, it duplicates the signal. So you can just right click and click disconnect. Now that uh, isn't connected. We'll go ahead and um, we'll just have music. I'm actually going to call it, yeah, we'll just call it music. We don't have that yet. Again, audio stream player. In here, you'll go to the inspector, quick load, circus.org. You can verify it's there. Can't play it though, can I? Well, that's okay. And you'll see here though, loop is set to on, so you can just verify that. Um, and you can uh, right, go ahead and run this. I think it should work. Nope, it won't because I didn't name it properly. So we'll just name this music, click play, Hmm, we've got an issue. Let's see what happened. Error calling from signable, signal press to... Error calling the signal press to callable on play music pressed. Method not found. So let's go back into play music. Make sure I did it right. I'm just going to disconnect. And we'll go ahead and connect it here. Oh, there's some funky junk going on there. Okay, we should be good now. So we got the music playing. We can play the sound effect too. Kind of nice. And we can even change the volume. Because that's pretty common. Sometimes things come in a little hot. You can do negative five decibels. That'll make it less loud. And uh, we'll run it again. And you can even change those while it's playing so you can get a sense of what feels right. Okay, that's negative five. Just change it to negative 20, that's barely coming through. We'll set it to two, quite a bit louder. Negative five, that sounds pretty good with my audio, but I don't know what my volume's at, so. Um, might be kind of a little odd. Um, but, okay, great, you say. What happens if we keep pressing play music? It just keeps restarting. What if we make it pause music and play music? We can check the current property, we can check the properties of audio stream players and react accordingly. So music has, I'm gonna stop that, because wow, that's, uh, I think I designed it to be annoying and it, it sure is annoying. Um, oh nice, we've got clapping. Okay, um, you can then check here, and let's do a couple things actually um, to, uh, you can say on ready var. We can say pick up SFX. I want to make it so that we have some typing because that will make life a little bit easier when we're making our game. So we're going to say pick, pick up SFX is of type audio stream playback. And we're going to set it on ready to pick up SFX. So now that we know it's an audio stream Did I not do that right? Audio stream player. Okay, see, you gotta get it right. It's audio stream player. And then we can change this to be pickup SFX. And then for music, we'll do the same thing. Audio stream player, and we'll set it to music. This not only lets us more easily rename our nodes in the scene, but gives us nicer type hinting, I think. Let's see. So now we have music. Yes. Did that not work before? Sorry, let me just verify. No, see, that's that's why we do these things. I sometimes wonder why, and that's why. So music, audio stream players have properties. And 
Let's look at the docs. This will be a good learning opportunity. If you command click or control click on that, we go to audio stream player and uh, plays audios non-conditionally. Let's check a couple things. So we've got autoplay, defaults to false. That's like when it's added to the scene, should it play automatically? And I kind of think uh, sometimes you might want to, like when you add music, but you can check if it's playing. And that's what we care about. And there's some other options here too, like the volume, which you could change dynamically um, in your code. But let's go back to here and um, go ahead and uh, go to main GD. And um, so we'll do music that play. We're back, we're back where we were. Sorry, sometimes uh, go off in the weasel a little. That works, that works. But let's go ahead, instead of restarting it on its playing, we'll say if music dot playing, then play it. Else music dot. Now there's, I want to say there's, a way to pause it. But let's just see if stop pauses it. So, oops, got these wrong. That happens a lot. Getting the logic right is very important. Okay. It's playing. We're at the very beginning of the track. Let's get to a part in the track where it's different so we can check if stop pauses or goes back to zero. Okay. Click it again. Okay, it restarts it. So that's fine. That's interesting, right? Um, I want to make it to see if we can pause it, but instead, for now, let's just go ahead and we'll say um, we have our button. Let me punch out of here and we've got uh, play music. So we'll say play music. If it's playing, we'll stop it. So we'll say play music dot text is equal to play music. Because we're saying, okay, the music has been stopped. We want to play it again. And now we'll make it stop music. Run it. Now change the stop music. Click it, plays it again. That's cool. Let's see if we can figure out how to pause an audio stream. Playing. True, false. Ooh, what if we just call, what if we just change that property value? So instead of saying, um, pause music, we'll say resume music. And then what if we say music.playing is false? And then here we'll say, does that work? Okay, we're just waiting. Ah, that doesn't work. Is it because play restarts from zero? I bet you it is. Okay, play from position zero. So we could keep track of the position when we start and stop and um, do that. But um, I think we can instead just say playing is true instead of calling that function. Thanks for bearing with me through this. Gosh, we've got to wait to get to the good part. Okay. Ah, it restarts it. All right, let's, um, I uh, don't know how to figure that out, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll code it our own way. We'll say music.stop. We'll say music.position. There's gotta be a way, get playback position. And we'll say music pause is that. And then here we'll say music pause. Uh, we'll say music dot play music pause pause is short for position so we stop it we keep track of the variable then we play it and then whenever we stop it it um, will be updated so okay that worked interesting stuff always learning um, this whole section is way off in the weeds but uh, Hopefully this helps you with just like basic audio playing and um, 
what you do there. Um, I use a program called One Bit Dragon to make my music when making games, but you could just find free and public domain games. You can make music the way you want to. Um, one Bit Dragon's pretty neat. It's uh, pretty simplistic and works well. That's audio in Godot, the basics. All right, thanks. See ya. Bye.